Hey, what's going on? What's going on? How's everybody doing? I hope y'all can hear me loud and clear. I hope you can hear me really loud and clear. Hey, if you on here, please let me know where you from. How was your day? How you feeling? How you doing? Um, we have a really good live today, right? We have a really good live today. Trust patterns, not apologies with Dr. Jamie. Today's going to be good, man. If you're in here, let me know how your day was. Let me know how you're feeling. Put up your favorite emoji. Let me know that you're here. All right. Let me know that you're here. All right. Let me know that you're here. So we're waiting for Dr. to come in. For here. Hey. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. Let me back this up a little bit. My face is all up in it. All right. Okay. Yep, I can hear okay. you fine. Okay, good. How's your day going? Oh, just great. <laughs> Snow day just, tomorrow. <laughs> huh? Snow we day tomorrow. Snow day tomorrow. I know my daughter was like, um, oh, should we um build a sled or, or let's 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 go snow day? I'm like, no, not for you. <laughs> you don't you don't understand you need to be an adult not to like it. That's right. It's okay for you, you know, but we don't like it. We don't yeah. no. no. So thank you. Plans. Long overdue live. I'm happy that we're here. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your work. You Thanks. know, I always we always tell people that, right? We always tell people that, you know, via text, but it's good to to meet you face to face and tell you yeah. thank you. You do amazing work. Excellent. We love the post thank and you. everything is so relatable to, to lives and saving people. So that in itself is a blessing and, and good work. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Well. Thank you very much. But tonight's not about me. <laughs> It's about you. So tell me a little bit. So tell everyone, you know, a little bit about who you are, um, name, profession, and everything. Okay. So my name is Dr. Jamie Zuckerman. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. I practice outside of Philadelphia. And I work with adults, primarily depression, anxiety. I have a private practice. Um, and a ton of relationship issues, uh, mm. boundary issues, adjustment to relationships. And I also have a kind of small specialty in clinical health psychology. So I see a lot of patients who um, are recently diagnosed with a chronic or terminal illness. I see a lot of uh, neurology patients. I'd worked in a neurology office for years. So I developed kind of a specialty for epilepsy and MS. So I see a lot of patients with neurological issues as well. All right, that's excellent. See guys, I'm the coach. That's the professional. <laughs> that's the doctor, right? That's the doctor, right? So, all right, that's that's excellent. That's excellent. How long have you been doing all of this? Oh gosh, um, since two thousand five. Okay. I think all right. fairly a long time. Long time, yeah, yeah long, long time. Um, I worked. Okay. I worked in hospitals. I worked in mm -hmm. uh, the VA system, and then eventually mm -hmm. went into private practice. I taught undergrad for a while. Um, yeah, now just private practice since I had kids. Okay, that's good. So a question I always ask people, like yep. the why. why? Why? Why did you get into this? So originally I got into it um, for going all the way back. I had taken a psych mm -hmm. class in high school, loved it. But I was more fascinated with how the actual brain worked itself. Mm -hmm. Not so much being a psychologist and a therapist, but almost went into neuropsychology because I just, I still am fascinated just mm -hmm. with the brain. Um, so that's how I got into it. And then as I learned more about it, I decided that I wanted to go more into therapy, uh, more into behavior therapy. And so that's where I ended up. I mm. thought it was fascinating that you could shift your behaviors ever so slightly, but yet have such an impact on the people around you in terms of shifting their behaviors. I thought that was interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you think that that's a lot of, um, that's, uh, how can I say this? That's what a lot of people need to do like shift yeah. their shift their behaviors yeah and a lot of people think they shouldn't have to because they're not the ones at fault and and they're right yeah but it's the only way that that anything really changes if the other people yeah. around you aren't up for changing so what about the people who always say i know i'm going off topic but what about the people who say um this is me you know those this is me people that, well this is who i am mm -hmm. like is that who they really are or do you have the power to change that i think it depends on their diagnosis i think mm -hmm. that um, depending on if it's something, you know, like it's depression or anxiety where they're really kind of, there are patterns, but you can unlearn them because you can always unlearn patterns. There are certain personality styles that are a little bit more treatment resistant where mm -hmm. 
it really isn't an issue because they actually don't present for therapy. So mm -hmm. if they say it's not me and they're not willing to change or not willing to get help, then their insight's mm -hmm. pretty low. So chances yeah. are that they may not change. But for people to come in and say that it's, it's, you know, they're the ones that don't have to change. This is just who I am. Yeah. I really just ask a simple question. I say, well, how is that working for you? Mm. And that usually kind of, you know, gives them a little bit of a, a mm. little dab of insight because, yeah. because things aren't working. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and one of the things that you said in there was the patterns, right? And that's what we're here today, right? We're talking yeah. about the patterns um, that we're talking about. So what are patterns sure. that, so, like, what are patterns, like, in relationships, non romantic and romantic so patterns are are ways of responding to um other people to specific if you're getting really behavior specific stimuli so how we choose to respond in any given situation and usually our responses mm -hmm. are kind of under an umbrella so to speak of almost if you think of like railroad tracks we have these kind of set ways of doing things and we have a bunch of them. And so um, those are our patterns. And we learn them from very early on growing up. Mm -hmm. um, we either model what we see or sometimes people will see something and then go the opposite, which isn't always healthy either. But these are ways of responding to yourself in relation to the world around you. And it's how mm -hmm. we navigate our world. Yeah. Because a lot of people have this, there's negative patterns, right? And then there's yeah. positive patterns. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are some like not negative, but challenging patterns that some people face in relationships? Sure. So I think I don't I think the positive and negative patterns, it depends mm -hmm. on the context of the situation, because some things that are some positive patterns, let's say, may not work in other situations. And, and we, mm -hmm. I'll bring that up later. But that's when you have to start to shift thing when your patterns that you've been using for so long that worked so well for you growing up, let's say for survival mm -hmm. reasons or getting through difficult upbringing, they worked for you then as a kid. As an adult, mm -hmm. you're not in that same situation anymore. So you don't need those same patterns. And yeah. mm -hmm. you have to start to shift them to fit your new world. And it's when you don't shift them mm -hmm. that depression, anxiety, frustration start to come about. So mm -hmm. one of the patterns that I see a lot um, are, so, you know, kind of these self-sabotaging behaviors yeah. in relationships. Either um, they're nervous to get I'm making this very general but they're nervous they're going to get hurt people are going to leave mm -hmm. them abandon them so a couple things could happen either they have a pattern of um, dependency right they need yeah. this other person to define their self they need this other person to um, make them feel whole and then mm -hmm. you can have the other extreme where they're so concerned about somebody leaving them that they're going to do the damage themselves so that they can leave and get out before the other person leaves them Mm, yeah, or, that's something so bad that the other person leaves because um, at least they had control over why the person left. Oh, so oh wow, okay, wow, that's that's <laughs> that's deep. I hope everybody, I hope everybody, um, listen very carefully. I'm going to be saving this live and giant on notes myself after <laughs> after this. I'm definitely going to be doing that. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So what about a pattern of a man? Right, he he doesn't argue. Right, he doesn't argue. Anytime he's faced with an argument with a significant other, he runs and leaves. His, 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 his mindset is, you know what, I'm done. I'm out the door. I'm out the door. Mm -hmm. What kind of, and that's his pattern, right? Mm -hmm. How can you explain that? Like, how, how can he change those, change that way? So if, assuming he's willing to change and he oh, is mm -hmm. aware of this pattern. That's the key word. That's the key, yeah. That makes a big difference. <laughs> yep, it does. If, it does. Yeah, if, if they have insight into this and they're aware that they're doing this, um, one of the things that I would probably start with is something very, mm -hmm. very simple. Um, instead of having them leave the house, why don't you instead go into your room? So you start very small. If you still need to leave the situation, oh, okay for now. But instead of leaving the house, which is such a, such a statement, maybe go into mm -hmm. the room so your partner knows that you're still there, but you're just over here instead of completely leaving. And, and that, yeah. it's, it's easier for the person to do that and then gradually start to shift this way than to take a goal like that of not leaving without any skills in place to deal with that discomfort and make them say, because the reason why they're leaving and running out the door is because whatever they're feeling in that moment is so uncomfortable 
they they yeah. can't tolerate they're not willing to tolerate that discomfort and so they leave because leaving yeah. temporarily gets rid of that discomfort the yeah. problem is the message they send themselves is that they can't handle it and mm -hmm. then again the message they send their significant other is that you're not important enough your message to me isn't important enough for me to stay and listen yeah. Um, yeah. what their partner probably doesn't get is that they're so brutally uncomfortable right now that mm -hmm. that's why they're leaving yeah and, and and that's the thing when you walk out that door you know um for both men and women we go through like uncomfortable situations it's very uncomfortable when you walk out that door sometimes it says that you know what i'm abandoning it, right. some people might feel like and like you said before about the triggers and trauma from your past if you're walking out it might be a trigger that hey my father walked out my mother Correct. walked out of my life now Correct. you're the next person to do it Correct. so for a lot of people it's like it, it could be detrimental yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because it could be if very. Do if you grow up in an environment where you're used to whenever your parents argued or your caregivers argued, one left, mm -hmm. you're going to technically, possibly model that same behavior, and then you're recreating yeah. a scenario that you don't want to happen, or yeah. you you're with somebody, you're married to somebody who leaves because you're mm -hmm. used to, your let's say your mother or your father walking out when they would argue. So. Mm -hmm. it, you tend to attract that familiarity and it's not because it's healthy. It's because those patterns are familiar. That's mm. the only reason it's not because they're good or bad. They're just, they're just familiar. Um, and as yeah. human beings, we like familiarity. It makes us feel safe. We can predict what comes next. So that's why yeah. we, we kind of recreate this. Yeah. And uh, like fam familiarity is crazy because of the fact that a lot of people accept it and they stay in relationships that's right. for years and decades, knowing that they're not supposed to be in that relationship. Mm -hmm. But just because it's familiar to them, yep. they don't want to see themselves outside of this because it's like it's scary. Yeah, it's scary to, to leave because they don't have. <laughs> any you don't other, know. Know any other ways? Yeah, yeah. And you said something earlier too about control. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't control it. So it's 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 amazing. Um, so why? Sh what about trusting apologies? You know, because everybody apologizes. You yeah, know, all the time. Every time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So. The topic is trust patterns, not apologies, mm -hmm. right? Why should we trust a change pattern and not just only an apology? So what I, my rule of thumb for that is if I can't see it in a video, it doesn't exist. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you can hear words, but you can't see words, mm -hmm. right? So if somebody apologizes, that's fine. That's great. But if mm -hmm. I can't see it, it's not a behavior. And words mm. themselves don't change anything. That's no different than worry. You're just saying mm -hmm. it out loud, right? So um, sorry, my phone keeps, for such a new system, like turns it off if you're not touching anything on your phone. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what um, I recommend is if somebody keeps apologizing over and over and over again, and you don't see a change in their behavior, you really want to focus on what are they doing differently? Not what are they saying yeah. differently, but what are they what are they doing differently? Because the the doing part is the only thing that's going to in any mm -hmm. way, shape, or form make any type of change. Mm -hmm. um, I could sit here and say I have blonde hair, I have blonde hair, I have blonde hair, but I don't have blonde hair. The only mm -hmm. way I'm going to get blonde hair is if I go and do something about it, right? Yeah. So if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, so and that's the thing with know. yeah, and, and that's the truth because you know you have to you have to trust action. Mm -hmm. right you can tell me all the beautiful things in the world i'm sorry and right. the thing about it is a lot of us you know men and women we believe sweet things mm -hmm. we believe like people can talk you into doing yes. anything and you'll believe it yes. right we live in in a, in a society where someone has could be cheating on you for three weeks in a row and then they keep telling you i love you mm -hmm. but haven't i shown you that i loved you mm -hmm. you know i tell you that i love you i was buying you this or i mind that words have so much power yep. but you have to get to that point in your okay. life where it's like, you know what, you can say whatever you want, but I'm gonna walk out. And like you said, you have to be willing to change, right? You can't just say I'm going to change, you have to have that willpower behind it. And it's more than just the change, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Because mm. uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, people will say they want to change. And I, again, assuming they don't have like a severe personality disorder, I do truly believe that people want, they really want to change. Um, but the problem is it's not the change they're afraid of. It's the discomfort that they're going to feel if they make that change. And that's what they yeah. avoid is discomfort. That's why saying I'm sorry is so much easier than actually 
changing their behavior. Yeah. And, and then a, a lot of people, they, they, and I, I agree with that a hundred percent, you know, a lot of people love that word. I, I'm sorry. is like yes. so overrated. And yes. like people say, I'm sorry. And then some people don't even say it correctly. They are, right. I'm sorry. You, f right. and then it's always a comma there. It's That's never, right. I'm sorry um, that I did this. They never yes. identify what they, they did and they always put a comma. I'm sorry. But if you hadn't did this, then I would have never did that. Yeah, or I'm sorry, really you felt that way. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I tell so, people too when mm -hmm. they say things, if they say I'm sorry and they're going to make an apology with the behavior change with it, I'm sorry and. Never mm. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry and. You know, mm. I'm sorry and you made me upset too. Rather than I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but you made me upset because that it doesn't take away from the importance of the apology. Exactly. I hope, I hope everyone is taking notes. I hope you have your notepads and your pens out. I will give you some time to go actually and write some <laughs> notes down or grab a pen and paper and really, you know, get something done. But the next thing is how long, like if someone says, I'm sorry, right? And then they apologize to you and they say, hey, you know, I'm sorry for X, Y, Z, and I'm going to change, mm -hmm. right? How long? Because you're going to mess up along that course. way. You're going to mess up. Yeah. So what is a good grace period, I believe, to really say, you know what, you are changing or you're showing some kind of effort? I think it depends so much on the situation and the behavior you're trying to change and your background. And mm -hmm. if, you're, if, if you're talking about somebody who has a history of, let's say, sexual abuse, their trust issues mm -hmm. are going to be really, really difficult to work through, let's say, versus, and not that I'm minimizing anyone's, but, you know, versus, um, let's say, a situation a spouse cheated on you and so you don't trust them for those reasons. So, you know, some reasons are really deep rooted and they involve a lot more um, work, let's say, than something that maybe isn't so deep rooted that hasn't existed since childhood. Mm -hmm. So I think that really varies. And I think yeah. it also depends, regardless of the situation, the person's motivation and willingness to be uncomfortable during the change no. process. You could have somebody yeah. that, you know, has kind of a benign reason to do what they do, but if they have no willingness to change they could take yeah. longer than somebody who has really, you know, deep seated things that need to change. Yeah. And I also, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it all, it also takes the other party, the person who's doing the forgiven to the person, because a lot of people, they like to provoke you, right? Mm -hmm. They'll not provoke you, but if they see that you say you're going to change the yeah. next day, you do something wrong. They're going to say, well, I told you, look at this. Right. I told you you're not going to change. And there's people who will negatively do those things to you yeah. and make you don't want to change. It's like right. you're trying yeah. But you keep nitpicking every single thing. So you know what? Yeah. I'm done. I'm not going to do it. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's, the, the issue with that is there's a couple things. One, if you're going to have your partner change, you have to be willing to, to forgive them and not yeah. hold that over their head. If they're making the effort to change, mm -hmm. um, if they're really willing to, you can't, you know, if they make the change and then five years from now, you're still holding their over their head that, you know, they had an affair or, they stole money or whatever the case may be. If they're going mm -hmm. to make that change, you need to make the change towards forgiveness. It mm -hmm. kind of goes hand in hand. Um, the other thing too to keep in mind, which I, this is what, this is the part about behavior, behaviorism and patterns that I find fascinating. You have to be careful what you wish for, because if you ask your spouse or your significant other to change, mm -hmm. you have to remember you're used to that dynamic just as much as they are. So if they start shifting and changing, they're no longer who you signed up for. So mm -hmm. you may be used to having someone that you distrust because trusting someone's super difficult for you because you didn't trust anyone growing up, let's say. Mm -hmm. So it feels very familiar to not trust your spouse. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to make your spouse change, but yet you're super uncomfortable with this relationship of mistrust because that's what you know, and they start to become trustworthy, now you're uncomfortable. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. So it becomes, it's, it's, it's not as simple sometimes as just the one person changing because a lot of times the other person ends up being thrown off course by that person changing. Yeah. Would that mess up the relationship though? Would, would that, would that? Yeah. I, mm. I, I tell mm -hmm. people and they laugh at me, but I, I, it happens. I tell people who come in that have mm. boundary issues, let's say, or want to work on patterns. The one of the, th I said, I give, I'm giving you fair warning. One of the things you may find out as you go through this is that you may find that your friendships or your romantic relationships mm -hmm. are tied into your old way of relating to the world. And when you start to shift into a healthier way of relating to the mm -hmm. world, 
you may look at your significant other and your friends and your friendships and even your work place of work and say, Oh, these, these aren't good for the new me. This isn't, this is the old me and this isn't going to work yeah. anymore. And so a lot of times when people start shifting these patterns for themselves, they end up breaking up with the person that they're with. Yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't fit them anymore. Yeah. And that's okay. It, but I yeah. <laughs> But that's true, though. That's very true. Because when you start changing who you are, especially for the better, you're going to start looking at, at everything. Like you okay. said, do your work. Um, what do you do for a living? Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, your career, your children, mm -hmm. your life. And then you're going to say, you know what, I think I deserve a little bit more. That's right. So you're going to do everything else that proves to yourself that you deserve a little bit more. And I think that's what's beautiful yep. about knowing who you are, your work. Absolutely. So do you believe that's something that you actually should do? before you even get into a relationship in order to set the tone for your yeah. dating experience? I, yeah, ideally, yeah. Um, yes, short answer, mm -hmm. yes, I do. Uh, some people don't realize that they have unhealthy patterns though until they're so embedded in a relationship mm -hmm. because it yeah. brings it out. Um, you know, but it's very common for people around you, your family, your friends to look at the new you because remember, mm -hmm. you're the only one that's changing. You're throwing the whole equilibrium off. And so these people around you are, they don't know what's going on. They just sense you're different. And so you'll hear a lot of times a person is changing. We'll hear from family members in particular, you're different. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on for you. You're being obnoxious. You're being selfish. You're being this, you're being that. When really mm -hmm. what they mean is you're not acting the same. It's making me uncomfortable. I like you when you're the people pleaser. So I'm going to tell you mm -hmm. you're being selfish to push you mm -hmm. back into your role of people pleaser. Yeah. So it's kind of like a pendulum. They just kind of try to push you this way and yeah, they don't, it's not yeah. manipulative it's they don't realize they're doing it yeah because they, they, like when you change for the better people's not going to recognize you no right they're not going to recognize who you are so to them it's like you're selfish and it is being selfish yeah. i'm being selfish to myself yeah. Yes, because correct. in order for me to become a better person and for me to be more comfortable and to grow and elevate it's not only for me it's for everyone else around right. me right because if i become better then i got more love to give and I can receive love in a better and a healthy and a healthy space. Correct. And I think that's the the the, the beauty about patterns mm -hmm. and just changing who you are. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So the other question is, when should we not accept? This is the hard one. When should we yeah. not accept an apology? When when is like enough is enough? Like we hear in the same. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry. I think that. So there's, there's two answers. The first is if there's abuse involved, the first time mm -hmm. that's enough. Okay. That's, yeah. that's enough. Um, now, whether the person is able to leave for safety reasons, mm -hmm. financial reasons, kids, that's a different issue. But as far as determining, is this enough? Yeah, that, that, that's enough. Um, I think when it comes to infidelity or others, you have to, you have to ask yourself what your, um, your deal breakers are. Everybody mm -hmm. in a relationship should have deal breakers and deal breakers will look different for every relationship. But let's say, you know, one of your deal breakers is um, no drinking, let's say. Mm -hmm. The person starts having a cocktail at dinner, nothing, nothing bad, just starts drinking when, but when they signed up for the relationship, that was something. So um, maybe the person's like, okay, I'm going to talk to this. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to see if they understand. And I think for each person, it's going to be different. If the person agrees to it, great. If the person, if they mm -hmm. find a balance, like, okay, I'm only going to have a drink out to dinner, but when I'm not with you, um, or the person could decide in three months that they've had enough. It, mm -hmm. it really depends on your own rules that you yeah. set for yourself. I think it's, it's different for every person in every relationship. Yeah. And, and also, too, I think people have to be really clear, very, very clear in the beginning of the relationship or the dating experience. Because what I've found is that a lot of people, they will tell you they're non-negotiables or, you know, the deal breakers in the beginning. But we let love and relationship blur our vision and we That's forget right. about these things. That's right. So and then when we forget about these things, mm -hmm. we accept it because we don't want to start over. We, we I like you. You know, I like you a lot. And. It's just this one little thing. You just drink sometimes. It's, right. But that one little thing, it's going to turn into a big thing. And then it's going to keep repeating itself. And now we're going to be like, you know what? In the beginning, I said I didn't like this. But that smile that he had or that, that, that smile that she had, it, it lured me in. Mm -hmm. And they brought me things. They made me feel good about myself. myself. And one thing I realized that we got to cut that out. We got forget about how you feel at the moment. Mm -hmm. If you're not into that, then that's not you. That's right. It's okay to let that go. We can't attach that to yeah. it. 
And every time you accept it, when it happens, you're sending the message that your boundaries aren't really real. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every time that happens and you forgive it, you have to keep in mind that you're giving the other person the green light. Right. Mm -hmm. You may look at it as another chance. They look mm -hmm. at it as, all right, I'm off the hook. So yeah. it's, 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 it's different um, for, for, you know, who's giving it and who's, who's receiving it. The other thing too is when people have had enough, let's say, a lot of the times, especially in divorce, when somebody wants to get divorced, but they keep staying, they keep staying because it's hard to leave for whatever reason. It's yeah. all known. Sometimes it takes years. I mean, I've worked with women for years and men for years going through divorce and trying to get them to this place to do it. Um, they know they've had enough, but the discomfort and the anxiety that they think they're going to have going through mm -hmm. this, this, this process is so overwhelming to them that they avoid it. They don't want to deal with it. So yeah. it's easier to stay in the relationship. So it's not even about leaving and going. It's about, are you willing to be really super uncomfortable for a brief amount of time to get where you need to be to be comfortable? Or are you mm -hmm. gonna stay, avoid that immediate discomfort of a divorce and stay in a relationship and just have it get progressively more uncomfortable yeah. in marriage? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I want, I want everybody to pay attention to what you just said. Because what you just said is the most important, one of the most important things ever going through a breakup or a divorce or an uncomfortable situation. Because what you just said is it's scary and it's uncomfortable and you'll have so much anxiety. And at times we'll put things off because we're scared and we don't know what it is yet. Right. And then, but a lot of people act smooth so fast when in reality, you could have saved it. Yes. You probably, you, you never did, you, not, you never know. But I think waiting a little bit to figure it out, what it is and how things, I think that's the most brilliant thing. Mm -hmm. We move so fast based yeah. on our emotions. We get scared, we get anxious, we get disappointed. We speak to people who's not Dr. Jamie. We, <laughs> we, speak, to, we speak to our friends. We get you know, friend therapy. We, we speak yeah. to the, um, Our friend therapy. <laughs> the, the, the work people yeah. because we get so much different information from yeah. different people, but we need to understand that the main answer has to come from us. We make the yeah. final decision, That's nobody right. else. No one else. So we have to understand that it's scary. It's uncomfortable. And, and this is stuff that we, we, I see it on your page. You see it on my page. And we let people know that this journey is not for, for, for people that want just a quick fix, you just want to an answer right away. No, You're right. not going to get an answer right away. No. In fact, and I think that's that mm -hmm. the quick fix. They're the ones that, that put themselves more at risk for depression and anxiety because quick fix means really what it means is avoidance of the ickiness. That, yeah. That's what a quick fix means. And so people who want a quick fix, they make, they make poor choices because temporarily right. they feel better, but in the end they don't. So they make, poor choices they make quick choices like you said right. they don't sit and think it through no. and mm -hmm. then they kind of dig themselves even deeper because now it's not just the situation now it's also the consequences of all these quick decisions that they made yeah and that's the you keep on saying the real words to keep me to get me keep talking right <laughs> but the consequences yes. that's i love words i like to like to dissect the words consequences there's always consequences to an action yeah. and a lot of people we just see what we see for the moment we see emotions, we see what they did, we, we blame ourselves, we can't forgive ourselves because we feel like we're the problem. Right. And we look for closure, we look for forgiveness, we look for so much things, mm -hmm. but we don't think about the consequences. So I, I challenge everyone on this live to listen to what um, Dr. Jamie just said and actually think about the consequences of any action that you're trying to do or you're going through right now. Mm -hmm. where, where is this gonna bring me five years from now? Exactly. Where would this bring me in 2021 in January? And if it doesn't get you to the happy you or a peaceful you or a new you, then you shouldn't go with it because those are like negative challenging patterns. Mm -hmm. right. So you have to stay on the course. I, I, I love that. I love that. So is there anything else you want to say about patterns that you probably didn't get out that you want to leave with everyone else before we get into the question yeah. and answer session? I mean, I think pa ch changing patterns are really difficult. It's because not only is it difficult to change them, sometimes you don't even know what your patterns are. Right. And so in therapy, you know, you kind of have these moments, at least I have these moments with my patients where I do a lot of um, like uh, arrow drawings of like this one does this and this one does this. And, you know, yeah. we have this scribble work at the end. Mm -hmm. But what they realize is I didn't realize I did that all the time or, oh, I didn't realize when I did this, this person did this. Oh, like, you know, and it, when they see the whole big picture and the role that they play in it, 
then it becomes a little bit more empowering because mm -hmm. now they realize, oh, if I change this, then I kind of change this one as a domino effect. And then the consequence of that is this. And they, yeah. it's almost like a chess match. And you have to think 30 steps ahead um, of where you're going to be and who you're going to change in the process to get you where you need to be. And it's very empowering for people when they realize that, you know, they'll come in and they'll say, I did this, I normally do this, and mm -hmm. then this happens, and she didn't even realize that she was, you know, so they'll say they kind of manipulated other people's yeah. behaviors without even, the, with the person not even realizing what was going on, and it's a very empowering feeling because all this time they've been waiting for this person to change, waiting for my husband mm -hmm. to do this, my wife to do this. If only my boyfriend would do X, Y, and Z, then things would be great. Better. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. And so they realize, okay, that's not going to happen. And they finally kind of succumb to this idea. Okay. I'm going to change something. They mm -hmm. shift the whole dynamic shift. And it's so empowering to see. So once they get that little nugget of, of kind of accomplishment and mastery, then it becomes easier. But to get to that first point is really, really tough. So I just tell people, be, be patient, be gentle with yourself, just kind of stay the course. It will happen, but you have to put the work in and the work is uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, very uncomfortable. Thank you so much. Excellent. Everything was excellent. We loved it. Um, so right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get to a question and answer session. So we're going to answer a few questions, not a lot, because I know that as soon as I press that question button, you're going to have a lot of questions. I encourage you, if we do not get to your question, I encourage you to go on Dr. Jamie's page. Her Instagram is right here. Go and follow her. Ask her the questions that you might have. I'm sure that she has some kind of resources or tools for you. So I highly encourage you to go follow her. Ask her questions if we don't get to your question tonight. All right. Let's jump in to. All right. I'm happy that I got this one because you have been queen black essence you have been really really um, active in the chat room so i'm happy that you showed your question so how do you get over someone who continuously show and tells you that they don't want you um etc why not move on so the question is how do you get over somebody that doesn't want you so yeah um i don't think it's a matter of so this is where I think the behavior piece comes into play because it's not so much a matter of getting over somebody because mm -hmm. that person changed who you were. So to get over it makes the assumption that it never happens and it mm -hmm. happened. So mm -hmm. you have to be willing to kind of realize that, that that relationship changed you a little bit and carry that forward with you rather than trying to get over something. Because to try mm -hmm. not to think about it, not feel about it, not be sad about it, it doesn't make sense. So you have to be willing to sit with your feelings, sit with being sad, sit mm -hmm. with feeling lost even, sit with feeling so discouraged. And that will move you forward faster than trying to get over it, pretend it didn't happen, move yeah. past it, move on. It's really the wording we tell our brains. If, if, we, if we're just willing to feel sad, we move That's forward true. So much faster. The wording, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard and it's, again, it's not something that's gonna be easy. Yeah. Um, you, you really want to look at your behaviors and ask yourself, what does moving on look like? Not feel like, but look like. If mm -hmm. moving on looks like I'm going to go to the gym twice a week, if it looks like I'm going to try to go on one date a month, if that's mm -hmm. moving on to you and you do those behaviors, then you achieved your goal. But if it's based on an emotion, our emotions fluctuate so much that it, it's, it's difficult and kind of gets you stuck if you say, my goal is to feel better or move on. That's, that's kind yeah. of arbitrary. So set realistic goals and, and approach it that way. Yeah. And I think that's um, um, excellent. Like the language part that you said that the language yeah. and a lot of us is what we say to yourself is what yes. you believe. You consistently say that. And people always say, Oh, I will always be single. I will never find another person. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants me. Nobody loves me. All you're telling yourself is that you don't love yourself and you don't want yourself. That's right. And you'll and, put that out there. Mm -hmm. You'll and you'll put that out there. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get every single thing back Correct. that kind of um, validates Correct. what you're putting out there. That's right. And one thing that, that Dr. Jamie actually said to answer those questions is you say in here, you said, how do you get over someone who consists the show and tell? We just covered show and tell. Apologies and patterns. So they tell you that they don't want you, which is they keep telling you this with words. But then they're not even telling you. They're showing you. Right. So they're not even telling you, they're showing you. 
So I'm um, sorry. My, my daughter, my, my wife told me that I'm loud. <laughs> my daughter, <laughs> my daughter sleep. <laughs> That's the benefit of lives. I gotta I be quiet because right. she's sleeping in the other room. She just got her to sleep, so you know she's four. So right. she's like, she's like, be too loud. And I'm like, okay. I know, but yeah, but um, and the thing about it is that you have to have the courage to understand that they don't want you. Yes. And that's the hardest thing to accept. They do not want you, right? You got to want yourself. They, you have to choose yourself and you have to love yourself. You just told me that the person do not want you. Why would you want someone that don't want you? So now you have to look inside your heart and say, you know what? What does that say about you? Are you that like kind of not, not desperate in a bad way, but are you that desperate for love that you're willing to accept someone who don't really love you for you or accept you when there's many, many other people in this world who really would love you for you and appreciate you for you? And that's the dependency piece that not that this is the yeah. person, but that's the dependency piece I'm talking about is that when you put so much stock in what somebody else thinks or feels about you as a way to build yourself up as a way to judge yourself by mm -hmm. based on what somebody else is viewing, you, you kind of set yourself up if any self view is contingent on somebody else's love for you, you're setting yourself up because if that person leaves, that's good then they take kind of you with them. And, and that's mm -hmm. not healthy, obviously. So you really mm -hmm. wanna make sure that your view of yourself and your self-worth is contingent on, on you than somebody else. That's, that's, that's powerful. Oof. <laughs> We're going back to this live later. I hope y'all doing it. <laughs> so how do you get out of a comfort zone that you've been in for so many years? I guess that's general comfort zone. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. very slowly. <laughs> very mm -hmm. slowly like any other like take a sport for example you can't expect to pick up a tennis racket and win the u.s open right it, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't happen so it's the same thing with this you've been stuck in this pattern for so long now all of a sudden you need to learn a new sport how mm -hmm. do you learn a new sport well you got you have to le learn the fundamentals you have to practice it you're going to lose a couple times right you're going to you're going to even lose once you become a professional and you're proficient in it you're still going to lose on some days everyone has mm -hmm. to lose sometimes right so even in professional sports. So for this, I really, I equate it to that, that slowly start small. Don't pick the, the top thing of your goal. Make it insultingly small. Make the change so insultingly small that it's almost boring to you. And you're kind of like, I can do more than this. I don't want you to, right? Very, very small. <laughs> so you gain that sense of yeah. mastery. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. All right. There's so much. Uh, oh, this is okay. Good. I like this one. After being in an abusive, abusive relationship, how do you prepare yourself for a new relationship? So my, my first thing would be don't get into any relationship, <laughs> period, mm -hmm. until you period. prepare yourself for yourself. <laughs> That's it. Because That's it. Yeah, because I think a lot of times um, people who are in abusive relationships and who are the uh, the one that's abused, you know, your sense of self, especially even emotional abuse too. Emotional abuse can be equally as brutal. So, mm -hmm. you know, you your sense of self, your self-worth has been just beaten down. People say they're a shell of who they once were. They lost their identity. They don't even know what their own opinions are their own interests are it is extremely unhealthy to come out of a relationship like that feeling like that with no sense of with your sense of self buried i'll say it's not not there it's just buried mm -hmm. and then go into a new relationship because that new relationship is getting this person which isn't you that's not how you yeah. started in the relationship so it's super important to to be alone and and get help that you need and kind of be alone with yourself and figure out who you are now, because again, you can't pretend that relationship didn't happen. You're never going to be who you were when you initially got in that relationship. So you have to take that yeah. experience and kind of formulate this new identity. And then when you're comfortable and you know what you want, you can do it safely, then you look for somebody else. You may always have trust issues, right? So when you're in a new relationship, you wanna make sure that you look for somebody who doesn't feel safe and familiar because safe and familiar for someone who's been in an mm. abusive relationship is going to be another abusive relationship. Yeah. A yeah. Maybe a different type, but abusive nonetheless. Yeah. And that's, and that's, I love that part with the safe and familiar because a lot of people always say, Hey, Keyshawn, 
wait a minute to you. Why do I keep choosing the same person over and over again? Mm-hmm. It's because of the safe and familiar. That's right. You're safe and familiar. You don't want to go to someone, something else because you're not familiar with that. So you might feel a little uncomfortable. Right. So in order for, and you keep attracting the same persons because, hey, this person's kind of the same way. They talk the same way. They kind of soft. They do this. They do that. And we repeat the same mistakes. But I, I strongly believe that. And I'm happy that you touched on the trust part. Mm-hmm. because don't jump into another relationship because you're going to have a lot of trust issues That's right. and a lot of problems within yourself. And then you just keep confirming to yourself that you're not capable of being in a healthy relationship, which is not yeah. true. It's true if you use the same patterns, but it's just not true. Everybody is capable of being in a healthy relationship. You have to just, not just, but you have to learn how to set boundaries. You need to learn to respect yourself you need mm-hmm. to learn what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not. Mm-hmm. And, and then you can formulate something healthy. Yeah. Everybody's capable yeah. of it. And also to touch on that, healthy expectation. Stop asking for Lion King or these big people that, yes. that, that you help set healthy expectations. Because a lot of we expect like Prince Charming or, you know, a queen just like that. Yeah. Right out of like, it's going to save you from this pain. <laughs> Yes. And then you're, you're, wait, you're waiting for someone to actually get you out of this abusive yes. feeling or hurt or pain. And when who gets you out okay. of those abusive feelings mostly who mm-hmm. comes in like Prince Charming, the, mm-hmm. the abusive one, the ones yeah. that love bomb you in the <laughs> beginning and they're going to help you and love you and take care of you. And then they suck you in and then you realize they do it oh again. My God, this is the same thing all over again. Um, and I yeah. saw somebody post this, you know, how do I find love, true love? That's exactly what you're saying. What, what is true? What, what is true love? True love to me is something that's different than true love to you. True love to me, baby, if it's snowing, are they going to wipe my windshield <laughs> off for me? Right? True mm-hmm. love to someone else, maybe, are they going to cook me dinner? You know, um, you know, are they going to be a good father? So you have to operationally define these abstract terms, love, safety, trust. Those are words. We, we can't see them. If we mm-hmm. can watch what trust is, what would I say? What is mm-hmm. trust for you? What behavior is equal trust? And that's what you yeah. have to look for rather than the words I love you yeah. or the words you can trust me because that, yeah. that's, that's neither here nor there. And that's what I tell people. You have to see what does it look like for you? Not yes. anything else. Like even write it down, like get a yes. journal and write down, especially when you're single right now and you're going through some kind of pain or healing process, mm-hmm. write down what these things look like for you. So mm-hmm. when you do get into a relationship, you can identify what you don't Correct. want and what you do want. Correct. So you don't waste time with people who don't love you or love themselves. I'm good. I'm good. I, I, anytime I hear footsteps, I get scared. I think it's her. <laughs> if, y'all, if, if you guys see me fall to the floor, that means she hit me and I'm, I'm out. We're going to have one more question. Uh, I need, oh, this is a good one. Last question. Oh. So how do you co-parent with the next? Yep. I get this a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, you only have control over you and your parenting. Mm-hmm. You can tell your ex, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. But if they are toxic towards the children as well, then the insight level is probably minimal. Mm -hmm. Um, So you only have control over your own parenting. The best thing you can do is be the stable force and the stable parent if the other one is not, um, whatever that instability looks like. But you need to be the consistent source of love and support and nurturing and constantly giving them their structure, constantly giving them their routine and their schedule and let them know that no matter how badly at any point they may hate you for getting divorced or they may be mad at you, that you love them unconditionally no matter what they mm-hmm. say about you, no matter what the other parent says about them. You never want to bad mouth the toxic partner, mm-hmm. even if they're doing something so God awful you never bash them to the children. You can let them know that that behavior isn't acceptable. You can let them know that that Mm. behavior is unkind, but you never bash the person. You can say something about the behaviors. Um, Because the children then get in this, this, you know, this, I'm by no means a child. I do not work with children, but um, I can barely work with my own. But (laughs) but what what I will say is that, you don't ever want to put the child in the position of choosing, even if the other parent is so unbelievably toxic. You want to model healthy mm-hmm. boundaries for those children so they can take those boundaries you're setting and apply them when they're with the other parent. And then behind yeah. closed doors, say whatever you need to to the other parent. Yeah. You know, get yeah. your lawyer involved, do whatever. But, but as far as the kids go, it's really difficult to not bash the other one if they're toxic. But that's the most yeah. important thing. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I love that, you know, because you said this, you said that real gracefully because there's a lot of people who answer this question and they'll be, oh, you got to get rid of him. And, you know, they'll say a lot of things and then you'll start feeling like, you know what, you're right, you're right. You'll say something that you really don't mean or you'll make the situation worse. Yeah. We have to understand we have to make the situation better before we before it ex escalate because we know that situations like this can escalate in a second oh, yeah. to the point where it's domestic violence, abusive right. violence, you know, emotional um um emotional like, violence as well too. Mm -hmm. Um, like we have to really and one thing I would love to say about this is that you have to be very very clear, very very clear with your boundaries and what you expect in the co-parenting. Yeah. So you need, you need to come with something. You need to have some kind of, like what time you're going to pick the children up, yeah. when you're going to be there, how often you're going to be there, what is not tolerated. If we argue, we're not going to argue in front of the kids. We're going to do it at, a, at another time. You have to be very strict. Mm -hmm. And the person who has to be very strict is the one who's more mature. The, per, right. the person who, who's, who's like, you know, you know that it's hard for you, but this situation is going to change you for the better. And it's, it's going to prepare you for your next relationship. So the and, more you set boundaries, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say the more you set boundaries and expectations, the better the situation will be for your, your, you and your children. Correct. But, yep. And, you know, it's important to understand the person that is the, the healthier one mm -hmm. is the one that always ends up having to do more work than the toxic person. And it's not fair, but yeah. it's fair for your kids. Yeah. And that's what I would say. It's not fair. I get that. But it's, but it's the most fair thing for your children. Um, and, and the other thing to keep in mind with boundaries is when you set a boundary, and this is across any type of relationship, you set the boundary for you. The boundary you set has nothing to do with the person you're setting it for. Because you have zero control over what they think, say, or do. Mm -hmm. The boundary you set is so that you can walk away from the situation feeling more neutral, more at peace, because that's the only thing you have control over. So it doesn't, you know, people say my boundary didn't work because my ex did X, Y, and Z. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, that doesn't mean your boundary didn't work. How did you walk away from the situation? And they said, well, mm -hmm. I, I did what you said. And I, you know, I, instead of screaming, I just calmly said, blah, blah, blah. And I walked away. I'm like, okay, so you, you maintained your boundary. What they do in response, that's up to them. It's not um, your fault. People <laughs> yeah. think that boundaries fail if the other person doesn't follow them. And that, that's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's true. You know, I'm just responsible for setting up the boundaries, right? right? I'm not responsible for how you accept those boundaries, Correct. you know, and if you set boundaries, healthy boundaries, and they become more toxic, I'm gonna just be honest with you, get the cops involved, get a lawyer involved. Yes. If, if, it, if it becomes scary to the point where you're, 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 um, you're faithful for your children, your life, or your family, it's okay to get the cops involved and it's okay to get a lawyer involved because it's not okay for you to put your life in danger. That's right. We watch, we watch the news. We see a lot of stuff that happens with physical abuse, you know, deaths. And let's just be honest. We don't want you to become that. So you got to do a lot of things that you're uncomfortable doing if it's going to bring you to a comfortable place. Correct. And I think that's what a lot of people need to understand. I agree. You and know. it's not a failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it may be hard to yeah. do, but it's not a failure to call a lawyer or call the police. I mean, no. Your safety comes first, period. Yeah. I'm snitching. I'm, Absolutely. No, I'm I, no, snitching. Yeah. You, yeah. you put your hands on me or my children. Right. I'm snitching. I'm running. I'm calling 911. I'm right. calling someone, calling my brother, my sister, yeah. everyone you call it because and it it's not your okay. Kids that, that it's not that you're not accepting. It shows your kids there's consequences the, to be. Jamie, that was, that was good. That, yeah. <laughs> Jamie, that was, that was it. That's, That's the not, icing on the cake. Keep talking. Keep, keep talking. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, if, if, if you have a spouse that's, abusive emotionally towards you or physically towards you and the children see this and nothing's done except taking it and then the person forgiving you know saying i'm sorry and you forgiving sorry mm -hmm. for, you're setting up such a toxic pattern for your children to, yeah. to to you know replicate whereas yeah it may be horrible and you may think i'm going to traumatize my kids if i call the police yeah. guess what you're going to traumatize them even more <laughs> if you yeah. don't because calling the police shows them that, you know, mommy or daddy's behavior is not appropriate and there are consequences to that. And these are the consequences. The police are called. I guarantee you your kids learn a hell of, hell of a life lesson from that than yeah. they will seeing this toxic pattern play out and then get confused about what's a healthy relationship. Yeah, yeah. I think that's excellent. I think that's, the, that's how we end this live, you know, <laughs> because I'm sure that this can go on for at least two, yeah. three hours. Now, this is but great. I have to save the lie before it cuts me off. So thank you so much thank you for, for joining me. us. 
you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. Could you let people know where they can find you? Sure. So my website is drjamiezuckerman.com, J-A-I-M-E. My parents spelled it weird, so everyone spells it wrong. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And my Instagram is Dr. Period Z underscore mm -hmm. psychologist. Um, and yeah, come follow me. And I, I post some good stuff about boundaries and relationships and yeah. all that. I'm pretty good with the, with the um, questions. If you send them to me, I'll, I'll answer them. Yeah, but don't send too much because a lot I have I have a lot of questions sitting there, and <laughs> I, I honestly I filter through them, but it, it's so much that yeah. I want to answer them for weeks. So I'll take try some. To get to, I try to get to all of them. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try because I might not, but I'll try. I'll try. You know, they got to really get to, you know trigger something within you to, to answer yeah, the exactly. question. So That's guys, right. I just want you to follow her, thank her for um joining the live, DM her, um, and just thank her for joining the live. We really appreciate it. We appreciate her. Until next time, we'll definitely do this again. Thank so, you so thank much. you again. Thank you. Anytime. Have You're welcome. Day. Good night.